Hey, so welcome back, and this is another daily code problem. So today it's called maximum number of moves in a grid. And so oh, I won't show you that just yet. So basically what you're given is a matrix here, which kind of represents a graph. And there's three different directions you can go down. You can either go uh, up one cell and to the right. You can either go to the right or kind of down one cell and to the right here. And so the constraints that you have is you have to start in the leftmost column here. And so you can start at two, five, three, or 10. And you have to make sure that the cell that you're going to is strictly greater than the current value of your current cell. And so in this case, say that we're at nine, um, although you can go in these three possible directions, you're actually um, constrained, constrained to only going to 11. Okay, and that's because, well, 3 is not strictly bigger than 9, 5 isn't either, but 11 is, so this one's good. Okay, so when you're looking at this problem, the first thing, to me at least, that I thought of was to use depth for search. And so the reason why this actually doesn't work is that the search space is just too large. If you looked at the constraints here, the size of your grid can be really large. And so by doing a depth first search solution, um, what I actually got was a time limit exceeded. And that's because if you got a massive, um, a massive input size here, it just, it, your algorithm just won't be performant enough. And the reason behind that is because, well, there's multiple ways that you can arrive to certain places. And so you're going to be doing a lot of repeated work. And the reason that is, is I'll show you here, we can get to four, three different ways. And that's by either starting at five and going over one, or we could start at two and go downwards, or we could start at three and go to four. Now, the reason why this is important isn't the fact that uh, you can get there multiple ways, but it's that you're going to have to recompute three times all the possible paths that you can go down using four. So four can go up and to the left, or it can go up and then down one, or it can go to the right and then up, or it can go to the right then over, or to the right and down, and also it can go downwards to the right or downwards and up one. Okay, so each time that you arrive at four, all this kind of repeated calculations, you're gonna have to do over and over again. Um, but by caching, all these kind of pre-computed work in a lookup table, you can avoid doing that over and over again. Okay, and so we're essentially taking our depth first search solution, which is kind of the brute force way of doing things, into a top-down memoization approach. Memoization approach. And so what this really means is we're still gonna have the recursive nature of our depth first search solution, but now we're gonna apply some caching or also called memoization. So we keep uh, avoiding that repeated work that I just kind of summarized at this position four here, where you keep going down all these possible paths. Okay, so what that looks like in code is the first thing we're gonna want is just the number of rows and then the number of columns in our grid. And we can just grab that like so. And we're gonna to want to return the maximum of the possible paths that we can go down starting at this leftmost column. And so to do that, all that you have to say is, okay, let's start calling a helper function for all the possible rows in this column zero. And so we just wanna go down all these possible rows in the range of our uh, size of our grid in terms of rows. And so essentially, this helper function at each kind of instance will have a certain row and a certain column that it's in. And we're gonna want it to return some result here. But in order to do that, we have to say, okay, we wanna be able to move to the right one, we wanna go upwards, and we wanna go kind of diagonally downwards. And so to do that, we're gonna to have to give it some direction. So. We're gonna give it some uh, downwards or upwards direction, some direction to the left or right in our kind of directions that we're giving it. And we can actually define this just simply using an array here. 
where at by doing it like this, this will symbolize, okay, we're gonna stay in the same row, but we're gonna go to the right, or we can go like down a row and to the right column, or we can go up a row and to the right column again. And so these are the three possible directions that we can give it. And so to calculate our new kind of cell that we're stepping to, we can just say, okay, the new row and the new column is simply equal to the current row plus the x direction and the current column plus the y direction. Okay, and so with that, all that we're gonna wanna do is, and I'm not sure why this is showing errors here, but this all, oh, I need a comma. There we go. So all that we're gonna wanna do is, oh, and I don't wanna say if, I wanna say for. So for the x and y direction, we calculate it like so. And so with that, we wanna make sure that not only are we stepping in the new directions, but we're staying within the bounds of this matrix, so we don't wanna get out of bounds here in all these possible directions. So we wanna stay within the kind of compounds of this matrix. And so to do that, all that you have to say is, okay, let's make sure that our current row that we're in is greater than or equal to zero and also less than the number of rows, since this is non-inclusive. And our current column is less than the number of columns. And we have this constraint here where we want to make sure that whatever value we're going to is strictly greater than the current value. And so with that, we just say, okay, let's grab our current value. And we want to make sure it's less than or strictly uh, greater than the new row and new column that we're going to, like so. Oh, and I just want to make this overall of case C. Okay, and I'm just going to expand this a little bit. And I spelt grid out twice, but we don't need to do that. And that looks good there. Okay, and so with that, now that we're making sure that we're going in the new direction and we're staying within the compounds of our matrix, let's go ahead and calculate the new uh, maximum. And so we can do that by first adding one. So we're including this new step that we're doing, this new move, since we're trying to get the maximum number of moves here. And so we just say, okay, let's add one. And we just simply call our depth first, or our dynamic programming function on the new row and the new column. And so this just symbolizes, okay, we have to add each one, otherwise this will always just return zero. And then we just want to call our recursive function and just be constantly taking the maximum of all these three possible directions. Okay, now the only thing that's gonna be left here is, oh, and we got an error. So uh, let's see here. Let's index the outer range. So we have row and column, x and y direction. We're making sure that r is less than that. And these look like valid. And c is less than the number of columns. And new row and new column. These seem fine. So zero, one, negative one, and one, or one and one. That's valid. Oh, sorry. So we want to make sure that this new row and this new column that we're in um, is what we're validating. Because otherwise we're not checking this. We already know that the current row and the current column is in the valid range. We want to make sure that the new column and new row is in the valid range. I'm sorry about that confusion. So this works for these test cases, but once again, 
it won't work for this much larger one because we have to cache it. And so to do that, all that you have to do is in Python, you can just simply use the cache annotation, which basically uses the row and the column or these kind of parameters as the key. And then the value that we're returning will be the value that this kind of lookup table that we're forming has. So when we're calling DP, it'll check our cache. And if it has it, then we can return it in O of one time. So let's go ahead and submit that and success. So that's today's daily legal problem. So essentially for time complexity, it's gonna run in uh, row, this is the number of rows times the number of columns. And so that is the time complexity. And then the space complexity is the exact same thing because well, we might be caching all of it. And since we're doing a recursive approach, that application stack uh, could be this range. Um, but then also the time complexity, because in the worst case, we'll be going down all the, or going through every single cell in our matrix. But yeah, I hope that helped and um, good luck with the rest of your practice. Thanks for watching.